Call of Duty is in a weird place of trying to reinvent itself while desperately trying to hold on to the community it has left. This has resorted to recent Call of Duty games banking on gimmicky game modes and marketing features as things that we want, but not actually having a clear vision on how to deliver the core game that fans are actually wanting to play. So what if Activision came to me and said, Hey, Elijah, we've watched your completely unbiased Call of Duty reviews. We loved how pragmatic and unsarcastic you are, and you don't bank on nostalgia whatsoever. So come to our studio and tell us what to do with the next Call of Duty. Yeah, a big what if situation to explore, but hey, Luke's out of town and I get free reign to do whatever I want with this channel while he's gone. If I had less than 20 minutes to pitch Modern Warfare 4 or whatever Call of Duty game we're getting in 2019 in hopes to not only reignite this franchise, but to also become a new sustainable game that's on the top of the FPS charts once again, this is what I would say. This Call of Duty game is going to focus on repairing the brand reputation amongst gamers by providing a Call of Duty experience that focuses on delivering a multiplayer that revitalizes the classic tactical gameplay that was first popularized in the Modern Warfare trilogy, provide an action-packed strategic and narrative-driven campaign, refine and renew the popularized zombie mode game type, reintroduce Spec Ops mode with a new emphasis on calculated cooperative gameplay, while creating and fostering an overarching progression system that encourages players to engage in competitive and social features features of the game. I know that thesis sounds like a mouthful, but hey, if I only had 20 minutes to fit everything in, this is the core idea. Okay, I really want to talk about how to reinvigorate the Call of Duty community to actually care about Call of Duty once again in a practical and realistic way, but before we can think about that, the game itself has to be good. Let's zero in on the multiplayer first. Please, no gimmicks, no battle royale, unless you're going to really update it and tweak it and make it a good Call of Duty multiplayer that people want to play and that's actually competitive to other battle royale games on the market. But stick to what Call of Duty knows, just make a standard multiplayer experience. Black Ops 4 showed some goodwill by introducing a mix of classic popular maps and new maps, and unfortunately, the gameplay was revamped that heavily impacted how the maps played out, and it still didn't feel the same as it did back in the day playing on those maps. The focus of the multiplayer has to be on recreating the classic Modern Warfare experience by drawing inspiration from the pacing popularized in Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 2, making Call of Duty faster paced doesn't make the game more fun or exciting. Let players choose to build a class for fast CQB and let players choose to play mid-range or long-range classes to counter the close quarter combat. The maps featured in the game must accommodate a classic movement system with weapons that are equally powerful across the board, more so than prioritizing health and counter gameplay. Guns should feel deadly, and strategy should be drawn from individual player awareness and tactical player placement, not a long, drawn-out, bullet sponge situation. If you shoot someone, you should be able to kill them. Quality of guns are more important than quantity. No gimmicks like specialists are needed here. A streamlined create a class system similar to Black Ops 2 would allow for a unique loadout to fit for specific playstyles that's easy to navigate and easier to keep the multiplayer balanced. It's really weird having to say this, but let's keep SMGs mostly for close quarter encounters, ARs for variable ranges based on the gun's fire rate, and snipers for more long range encounters. And you know, sniping. Also, while we're at it, can we make sniping fun again? Like, it was really satisfying getting a quick scope back in the day. Can we kind of leverage that back in the style that Modern Warfare 2 had? Because people still go back to that game just for the quick scoping experience. Shotguns can go back to being a secondary weapon again and should fill in close quarters with one shot. You can adjust the fire rate as needed to make it balance, but it's not fun to put a bunch of shots into someone with a shotgun and not get a kill. Let's aim for 20 maps in Modern Warfare 4. Yeah, 20 
not nine. Modern Warfare 2 had 16 maps at launch. Modern Warfare 3 also had 16 maps at launch and added three maps later on for free. So this is doable, especially if 10 of them are classic remade maps. Maps I had in mind for this new multiplayer includes popular Infinity Ward maps from over the years, Overgrown and Vacant from Call of Duty 4, Terminal, Subbase, and High Rise from Modern Warfare 2, Sea Town and Lockdown from Modern Warfare 3, Freight and Strike Zone from Call of Duty Ghosts, and Rust from Modern Warfare 2. Seriously, Rust is the nuketown of the Modern Warfare series. It amazes me that this map hasn't been included as a base map in every Infinity Ward release. It blows my mind. The 10 new maps of the game should draw inspiration from the Modern Warfare trilogy and focus on three lane level designs that have adequate cover and flank routes that are fluid. You can even take a note from Rainbow Six Siege and make day and night versions of every single map. So each gaming experience feels unique in its own way. Of course, for competitive gameplay, it would be daytime only, but it'd still be nice to have a system for casual players to keep things feeling fresh. Can we bring back popular wager matches and other mini games from over the years? Gun game, one in the chamber? If you feel like you have to have a battle royale mode, why don't you make a mini rapid royale mode that has 30 players going against each other in a short 10 minute period instead of some huge thing that takes up a ton of resources and then won't be fully supported later on. Also, let's not cut a campaign out of the game this time around. Let's have a story because that's been a staple of Call of Duty since the beginning. Infinity Ward has a record of making alright campaigns, but there are some important things that they should keep in mind. First, keep the game in the Modern Warfare universe. Post-World War III could be cool, and we don't need a huge jump to the future with no references to the series past like Call of Duty Black Ops 3 did. Avoid making the operations featured in the game feel chaotic. Cinematic moments are exciting, but level the stakes out a little bit. In Call of Duty Ghosts, it seems like something went wrong every single mission they were on, and they were supposed to be the best of the best, but literally, they're just in some chaotic mess in each mission along the way. Call of Duty 4 did a really great job at handling this by introducing players to a tactical gameplay, by having players experience a mostly flawless operation early on. The reminders to stay in formation, check your corners, really help portray this idea that you are the best of the best, and that these everyday soldiers do things like this on a regular basis and it's just part of the job. That's what's cool about it. That's the interesting narrative, not if they can survive a train being derailed during World War II in some over-the-top cinematic. That's not interesting. The interesting thing is the idea of this everyday person and their experiences and how you relate to that person as a player. That way, when things go wrong later on in the narrative, those moments are heavily contrasted to what we'd seen before, and the tension builds up in an exciting and satisfying finale. Holy shit! Did that just happen? Can't believe we made it! Taking on the world after World War III might seem like a daunting task in a narrative perspective because Modern Warfare 3 ended the war, and how can you make a story feel better than what they did with World War III? Well, narrative stakes can be manipulated through good storytelling. Make it a story about interesting and relatable characters more than just trying to cram action sequences into the game. To put it simply, aim to be the saving Private Ryan of video games rather than the Fast and Furious. Shifting Gears Zombies is now a staple that's in every Call of Duty game rather than just a Treyarch thing, and Black Ops 4 aimed to make zombies bigger than ever, and it wasn't nearly as popular or replayable as some of the zombie maps we've had in the past. As we refine the Call of Duty brand back to its late 2000s, early 2010s level of detail, zombies at this point could really use some refining. Call of Duty World at War introduced and popularized zombie mode, and to this day, the four classic maps from that game are some of the most popular, even now. Plus Kino, the first zombies map introduced in Black Ops. These maps were all loved, but why? Each zombie map had a larger emphasis on good level design, rather than creative level design. Creative set pieces are nice, like the idea of fighting zombies on the Titanic was cool, but the tight corridors, unpredictable zombie spawns, and uneven areas made the zombie maps in Black Ops 4 feel cluttered and more of a chore to play. 
Maps like Deriz and Kino had well-designed areas that led players to either move freely and be able to strategically predict zombie movement or work as a team to hold a certain area or lane while coordinating with other players. Look at games like Doom, where every object in an area has a purpose that complements the player's movement and shooting. Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare, World War II, and Black Ops 4 seem to emphasize easter eggs and settings over actual gameplay. While there are large audiences of players that play just for the easter egg experience, zombies should be built as a horde survival game first, and easter eggs should come second. The gameplay should be about surviving and competing and cooperating with friends to reach the highest level and earn the reputation of being good at zombies. Easter eggs are cool too and give players who love the gameplay something else to look for and reward players for achieving it, but scaling zombies mode down to smaller controlled levels with good designs is preferable than doing something huge and large that's not fun to play on. Go the early Treyarch route if you have to and repurpose multiplayer maps into fun zombie maps if it frees up the time. It worked well on Noct, Veracht, and Deriz, where all of them were taken straight from the multiplayer in campaign. Modern Warfare 2's Scrapyard or Modern Warfare 3's Arcaden could serve as really cool zombie maps. Let's make surviving and holding out fun again with a streamlined experience. And instead of using a zombies rank system separate from the multiplayer, base players ranks off of their highest zombies level reached on whatever map is queued. That would be really cool. If you're matchmaking in zombies and you get paired with a player who's rank number 35 or 45, you can be like, oh shit, he's good and try to work together to increase your individual number showing up next to your name because you survived as long as you did. But we'll talk more about the overall progression system later. It's very crucial for the future of this game. Spec Ops also needs to make a return and should provide a fun alternative to the typical multiplayer experience. Cooperative mode should be emphasized with a focus on tactical strategy as a group. Some levels should be designed for two-player co-op, and some more difficult operations should be reserved for groups of four players. Make these challenging tasks with cool payoffs in the progression system. It'd be really interesting if they did some sort of asymmetrical spec ops game type where everyone has their own individual role that they have to complete before you completed the level. I look to games like Grand Theft Auto V, who had heist mode where everyone kind of had their own role in whatever mission they were doing. Make Make them challenging and then reward players with exclusive skins or special icon trophies, more on that later. Moving into the progression system, it's extremely important to the success of Modern Warfare 4. In-game lobbies are a huge opportunity for players to show off their accomplishments and motivate other players to reach their goals and embrace challenges. Take a note from Halo Reach, its lobby system, where players can see other players' characters by easily navigating through their names. This is an opportunity and a reason for players to want to obtain skins for their player model. We know that games cost more to make nowadays than it did back in 2007, but at this point, loot boxes have burned the Call of Duty community more than it's helped them. Instead, implement a point system that allows players to purchase character skins and weapon skins with their in-game experience points, and give the opportunity to players to outright buy exclusive character skins or clothing from popular characters in Call of Duty history as a microtransaction, similar to how Black Ops 2 and Ghost handled the micro DLC. Adding hats, shirts, coats, pants, shoes, and more could lead to opportunities for rolling content and revenue to be earned to support the game long term without breaking the multiplayer experience or having sub-gambling in the game. For weapon skins, no weapon skin should be exclusive to microtransactions. All weapon skins should be earned through in-game experience and challenges completed, and be a representation of what accomplishments players have done throughout their career in Modern Warfare 4. It'd be really cool if they focused on making high quality skins rather than just an infinite number of them that you can randomly get in a loot box. 10 skins that you could get through campaign, 10 skins you could get through zombies, 
10 skins you could get through spec ops and maybe another 20 or 25 skins you could get through multiplayer that would be kind of the perfect number and enough reason for people to reach out and do these extra challenges to get something that kind of has some clout surrounding it bring back that awesome feeling of getting the gold camo for completing some sort of crazy challenge. It doesn't mean anything if you could just buy crazier skins in the store. So save the microtransactions for character skins and leave the weapon skins alone. Also in the player tab and player card, show the rank and clearly state what prestige players are on and icons representing up to three of their biggest accomplishments from their overall Modern Warfare 4 experience. As with any first person shooter game, on launch the game is going to need several different tweaks and adjustments along the way. It's really time for Infinity Ward to be transparent in exactly what they're doing in not only Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but also make sure the PC is getting the same treatment and no matter what platform you're on, you should be able to have a good experience. Listen to the community and dedicate a couple of people who are just in charge to making tweaks and adjusting things in reaction to what's going on in the game. There's so many times where Black Ops 4 was just broken and Call of Duty World War II were just broken for a long time and it was just ignored until finally an update rolled out later on. The updates need to be a lot faster, especially after the game's launch. And once you have a solid game set up and built, then you go and approach the marketing world and present Modern Warfare 4 to the public. Call of Duty World War II did a really interesting campaign about getting the old Call of Duty gang back together, getting the clan back together to play Call of Duty again. All right, lads, let's do this. But your mom made us tea. That's not my mom. <laughs> but the launch of that game was awful. But now, if you built a game that's actually good, you have the rep to back up the claims of bringing the good Call of Duty, the good Modern Warfare experience back. Make the marketing fun, not like stupid Post Malone commercials from Black Ops 4. Bring in old YouTubers like Reckless Tortuga and make them make some online gamer episodes or something. Do some sort of collaboration and make it something that's about the Call of Duty community and the gaming industry and the online industry rather than trying to just reach people by using some gimmicky music or some gimmicky jokes in a commercial. You can save all of the money you spend in hiring A-list actors to make some cameo appearance in a commercial and do something creative instead. We understand that there has to be secondary transactions after the game's initial launch to keep the game lucrative and revenue positive based off of investors. But it seems like for the longest time, Call of Duty has been trying to bank on an archaic practice of selling map packs. Yeah, that worked back in 2008 and 2009 and even through the early 2010s, but it's 2019 now and no one else is selling map packs anymore. Releasing content is important in Modern Warfare 4, so it's time for maps to be released for free, once a month, every month for the year. Be transparent about what's coming up and build up hype for free content. Constant communication is going to go way further. If you have to do season passes and DLC packs, do something with the Spec Ops mode that we want to introduce. It should offer two two-player co-op spec ops missions, two four-player co-op spec ops missions like Extinction Mode from Call of Duty Ghosts, and throw a zombie map in there too and sell that instead. If players feel like they are getting a rewarding experience from the game and the game itself is fun, they're going to invest in these extras even if it's not maps. Players shouldn't feel like they have to buy multiplayer maps because there's not enough in the game to offer. They should be buying things because they want more experiences, and if you make the game fun, people will invest. This system obviously is less lucrative than the glory days of selling map packs and doing season passes, but let's get some goodwill in with the Call of Duty community after the disaster of DLC that Black Ops 4 has been, and this whole game serves the purpose of gaining back the brand's reputation. It can still turn a profit 
and it can put Call of Duty back on track for the time being. But it's really important to preserve the Call of Duty franchise so that future games can be successful too. In a perfect world, doing more with cosmetics, maybe adding cool backgrounds, behind player models, and others could keep the game revenue positive, and Activision maybe one day would actually take a break from making Call of Duty and show players that they're dedicated to making a good game that they're going to support for a while even if player skins had to be moved to a pay optional loot system. Just don't touch those weapon skins. Okay, that's what I think. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Subscribe for more stuff like this.